So here's just some fire VFX test that I was messing around with. And what better way to do that than to burn my play, my, my friend's Playboy magazine. Hey guys, my name is Adam Grasso. I'm a filmmaker and cinematographer. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you through exactly how I organize my film files and projects on my computer. Now, this might not sound like the most interesting or glamorous part of the whole filmmaking process, but it is so important to organize your files so you can easily navigate anything. You can go back to files and find them after you've finished a project. But it also has the secondary benefit of being so, so healthy for your own mental clarity and sanity. It's basically the equivalent of entering your office to then sit at your nice clean desk versus sitting at the same desk and having your keyboard and mouse buried under a pile of equipment. Okay, so if you don't want to end up like that, let's get started. So this is my main finder homepage for how I organize all of my files. And as you can see here, I use Dropbox to do this rather than my computer's internal hard drive, uh, simply because the benefit is that if you have all your files on Dropbox, you can very, very easily access them anywhere in the cloud. So I'm not tied down to having stuff stored on this computer and then one day the hard drive fails, whatever reason, and all my files have gone forever. So having it on Dropbox, I feel a lot more comfortable in it being safe and secure. And also the benefit is that I don't have to be at this computer to access these files. I can log in with my account and then pull down the files from anywhere in the world. I have a plus account with Dropbox, which gives you two terabytes of storage. And I've only used 350 gigabytes so far. So it's quite enough space for a lot of the projects and files that you have. Just a quick note though, it's not enough for raw footage. I don't store any of the raw footage from any of my projects on Dropbox. So all my raw footage I store on external drives. I have a Samsung SSD T5, which I is basically my working drive. So the footage that I'm working on at this moment in time on a project edit lives on here. And then I also have backups on multiple hard drives, at least one extra, I should probably do another one as well because they say i think i think the saying is you need to have three backups and each hard drive should be in a different location and probably one in a different country but i don't really do that but i at least have two at all times now we're only going to focus on this film folder that you can see at the top because obviously that's what you guys are interested in so let's click on into this folder so as you can see once we're in this folder we've got current projects finished projects assets and renders now i have them numerically ordered because Finder typically just organizes based on the alphabeticalization of your folder names. So by having it numerically, if I ever wanna add any other folders into this in the future for whatever reason, I'm not having to reprogram my brain to remember like, oh, current projects is now here. And it just means that my muscle memory can keep the folder organization without having to like constantly change whenever I add new folders into this. So I think it's really useful just numerically ordering a lot of your folders if you can, just because yeah, the folder structure will always remain the same that way. So let's go into current projects. So the first folder I have in here is really, really useful because it essentially contains the default file structure that I copy and paste into every new film project that I create. And as you can see here, it's sequentially ordered. So it's based on the structure that you would do to actually create a film project. So as you can see here, you've got pre-production first, project files is the premiere projects or any other of the editing projects assets, renders, and behind the scenes. Now we'll see this folder structure in action when I show you one of my film projects in a second. Now backing out of this, uh, the second folder here is my Premiere Pro folder. Now we go into this and essentially what this is is just my default Premiere project that I have designed and structured for my needs essentially. So I have a lot of folders that are organized in the project panel in Premiere. So I have like a footage folder, I have a sequences folder, just so I don't have to constantly remake that every single time. What I'll basically do is open up the sequence, go into Premiere, save as, title the file with the project file, and then I'll save that in the appropriate project folder within my Dropbox structure. And the last folder we've got here just contains my DaVinci Resolve project backups. Okay, so let's back out of here and actually have a look at one of my projects and how I use this folder system in action. 
Okay, so this is a music video project that I'm currently working on. And as you can see here, this is the exact same default folder structure that we saw previously, all organized, stowed away in these specific folders. So if we go into the pre-production folder, you'll see that we have the call sheet from the shoe. We also have this image of a gimbal rig thing that I needed for the shoe. I'll put the link to the music video in my description below because we had a very interesting camera rig to make this music video happen. And this was just me annotating this to send to rental companies to say, hey, do you know how I can mount a gimbal on a pole like this? Uh, and then, yeah, here are just some VFX references for the CGI fish that we made for the music video. Again, link in the description if you want to check out the video to see how the, how the end result turned out. Now, just a quick note, I actually use Notion to plan a lot of the phases of pre-production for all my projects but there are some files that are just better to live in Dropbox rather than to stay on Notion just so I can get back to them for future reference. Maybe I'll do another video where I actually break down how I organize my film projects in Notion but if you haven't used Notion yet download it it's going to change your life trust me but yeah the files that exist in my finder it's not everything that's associated with the project but it's a lot of the documents and files from different applications that are best to live in Dropbox. So let's back out of this folder and let's head into project files. Now this is where I store all the Premiere projects, After Effects projects and also pluralized files uh, within these folder structures. Now if I had a particular project where I was handling let's say the illustri illustration elements to it or maybe I was doing the VFX for it. You could always just create more folders to accommodate the project files that are connected to that particular project. But as you can see here, here's all the After Effects projects that are associated with this music video, Premiere, same thing. Everything is just contained, organized, really easy to find. You could even organize this way more than I have. Like I have XML files that are just here that I could probably organize better. But again, you can just adapt the structure to however you like anyway. But this was a, this was still a massive difference than how I used to organize my projects. So even seeing this is just like, ah. Okay, so let's now go into the assets folder, which is the third folder in this default structure. This can be anything from graphics, for music videos, for instance, I have the song or versions of the song that the artist sent me. Um, I have the album cover because maybe I want to use it for something like maybe for a YouTube video or just for future reference. I've even got some uh, original VFX sketches here. So yeah, just any other little part of the video that needs a place to live, assets is normally where it would go. Okay, so folder four, we've got renders and renders is essentially all the exports that I've done during the course of editing and creating this project. So here we have our initial previs of the idea when we went and did all our tests with camera moves and making the performer get comfortable lying down in the absolutely freezing cold little stream that we shot in. Things like the final export, final export in different formats, slow-mo tests. This was, well, this was an even earlier previs that we did. So yeah, essentially any video file that I export out of Premiere, it will live in this renders folder. So the fifth folder we've got here is all the behind the scenes content connected to this particular project. So that's everything from random videos that I took on the day, a quick sneak, sneak preview of our rig that we had to make the video, images too. So all the behind the scenes images from the shoe, from my phone, I store them all in here. I do normally also make a Google Drive folder and then I essentially send that link around to all the crew and I say, hey, any videos or images that you took, please just drop them on this Google Drive folder and then anyone can just download them and we can all share them around each other. And I didn't do this uh, a lot in a lot of my early film shoots that I did, but BTS is so important. You should always do it. We had my friend Harry make an amazing little documentary, which chronicles the making of this particular music video project. So I'll leave that in the description too, if you want to check it out. But yeah, behind the scenes is so important. And I used to not do it because I was like, I want to be so focused on what I'm doing and make sure that I'm fully focused on it. But honestly, like you can take your brain out of what you're doing a little bit to take a few pictures. It's probably actually more healthy to just stop being in filmmaker mode and just objectively look at the set and be like, oh, this is a really nice looking set, I'll take a picture. And a lot of times you're not gonna have people who are there specifically to do BTS, so 
just it's always important just to take a few stills and a few videos on every set just as a, something that you can always refer back to of like you, you're gonna forget how you did lighting setups sometimes and I have all the shoots where I can look at the music video and I'm like how did I light that again and if I just took one wide shot on my phone I would know and now I don't know and it's lost forever in the back of my mind until I one day might remember. Okay, so let's back out of this folder and go right back to our film folder and let's go into the finished projects folder. Now this is where my current projects all get moved to once the project is fully complete. And as you can see here, we've got client projects, my projects, rejected projects, ugh, all the projects that we were writing, I was writing treatments on with a director or sometimes I would write the treatment myself and for whatever reason, the label didn't like it. But I store them here still because who knows one day I'll get a I'll work with a musician and I'm just going back through the old treatments and I'm like this is a great music video idea and then I just reuse the music video treatment with another artist who likes it. So just to clarify client projects is essentially all the projects that I've worked on when I wasn't undertaking the role of a cinematographer or a director because there's a lot of projects that I worked on when I was either a camera assistant or a gaffer like I was doing a lot of gaffering work while I was working my way up as a cinematographer so sometimes I would have to collaborate really really closely with the cinematographer so any lighting plans any equipment lists anything that might be of use to go back to and refer to in terms of how the cinematographer approached this particular film I have them all saved in there really really easy to access and you never know when you want to go back and check on how any of your older projects were made. So yeah, I would recommend to you if you're ever uh, assisting on anything or on a project and you're not um, doing like the, the head of department role, keep all the documentation from that shoot because one day you'll be like, what was that camera that we used? What was that lens that we used? And if you just save the kit list, then you'll always be able to refer back to it and say, ah, okay, so that, that's what lens I use. And that's what gave it that specific vibe. And I'll just use the same lens for my project. And yeah, I also have a separate folder here for all my finished YouTube projects. They all get organized and moved into this folder once the video is on YouTube. Okay, so let's back out of this folder again and back into the main film homepage. And let's go into the assets folder. Now assets contains a lot of files that aren't particularly connected to a specific film project. I do have folders like AG Film Stills, which Adam, which stands for Adam Grasso Film Stills. And that's just a collection of stills from all the projects that I've worked on. So if I ever need to pull up stills, maybe I wanna use it on a website or put it on Instagram or use it for whatever promotional reason, I have all these stills here ready to go that I've just, taken from all the music videos that I've worked on. But most of the stuff in this folder is a lot of stuff that is not related at all to a project. So we've got like AG graphics, motion graphics, which is like the YouTube graphics that I have. I also have things for my website, like the website assets, uh, website photography, website moving stills, which are like the moving GIFs that I made for my website. So it's kind of just miscellaneous files that are really, really important, but just not directly connected to a film project. Again, I could probably organize this a lot more and I probably should at some point, but uh, at least for now, I know where everything is if I ever want to find it. And that is really the big advantage of the system is that as long as you know where everything is, the next step is to make it so, so organized that anyone can go through your folder structure and find where all your files are, which is probably not exactly what you want to do. You don't want anyone to be able to go through your file structure, but it's a good philosophy to have when you're setting up this system where it's so easy to find anything that anyone could do it. Okay, so let's back up for a final time and let's go into renders. Now renders is a tiny bit different than the render folders within my specific film projects because renders essentially contains the final exported files from each of those projects. So for instance, if I ever just wanna say, oh, I wanna find all my music video exports in one place, I can just go into this folder and find them straight away. It's really great to have this folder system because then I don't have to go into 20 different folders to pull out 20 different final exports because they all just live in this folder. So to be honest, I could just probably just drag and drop this folder into Premiere or whatever other editing software you're using and you can just start cutting straight away. So also in this folder, I've got my YouTube video exports, uh, worked on films. I mean, I could probably title that a bit more eloquently, but essentially the final exports of all the projects that I've worked on when I wasn't taking the role of cinematographer or, or director. So yeah, things like, what is this? Oh look, it's Pep Guardiola, the manager of Man City. This is a commercial that I 
gaffered a while back. So yeah, it's just fun to have the rent, the final renders and just, because the problem is a lot of people, especially if you're working on a project, not as like the cinematographer or the, or the role that you really, really want to work your way up to doing, you'll end up working on short films, commercials or whatever. And you'll maybe you'll see it once. It is nice to have the final export on your computer. So you can always go back to it and just remember like the work that it actually took to make something like this. Um, it's always a good reminder. Uh, that you can always refer back to by having the export. I also have a folder here, which is called VFX test, which is essentially just random experiments I've done during my process of getting better at visual effects work. So here's just some fire VFX tests that I was messing around with for a potential music video shoot that I was pitching on. And what better way to do that than to uh, burn my play, my, my friend's Playboy magazine uh, and put some fire on it and track it and see how it looks. It's not mine. Promise. So that about wraps up this video. I hope you found it useful. I actually made this video because I couldn't find a lot of people online who were sharing their file workflow. So I took a few ideas from other filmmakers and essentially adapted their workflows into one that works for my own personal preferences. You can check out the film projects I've made by clicking in my website link in the description below. And if you like this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button and I'll definitely be sure to keep sharing more informative content like this. I'm Adam Grasso. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.